Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Chloe Sterling Fry, and this is Trouble and Mr. Lopaki. Um, I just wanted to talk to you about some of the work I've been doing recently. Um, Hello, I'm here at Suzanne Frick. I'm owner of Gallery Hoja. We are so excited to welcome Kelly Fry along with uh, Darby Raymond Overstreet and Antoinette Thompson to Gallery Hojo for a new show that will be up through March 17th. Hope everybody will come in. And I'm so happy that Kelly has agreed to discuss her works on the live video. So Kelly, do you want to tell us a little bit about these beautiful paintings that you've created? Uh, sure, Darby. Uh, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so this is uh, my, uh, the first piece um, is titled Sipa Food. It, um, it's just uh, the idea of, you know, transitioning in, in from this world into the next world and how chaotic that can be sometimes when you're a lot, when you're around that event horizon, you can just start going faster and faster. That's a beautiful sentiment, especially right now when we're doing such turmoil across the globe with people. Um, such a beautiful color palette too, with all the, the reds, and the yellows, and I love the little shots of blue. Thank you. Thank you. And should we go on to the next one? I, in this series of three paintings, I love the way you explore the shape of circles and other shapes that relate to public and other ancestral public sites, to Kiva, to the steps. And here's what you tell us more about the conversation. Yeah, so um, the type of this polarization is I feel, you know, the, the social climate we do that we have been completely divided. And I wanted to explore that, the, those feelings of being separated from each other and not, and to try to look at it in a way where not only are we different, but we need to celebrate those differences and that we need to work together and come together and in a balance and harmonize with each other and that's you know this world you know it's it's based on um, the flower world's concept on how through hard work and the way we look at things and the way we treat others that we can create this world that is beautiful and it's for everyone that's a beautiful idea i hadn't thought about that idea when i looked at it first with polarization but now that you say that i see a lot of circles but also right angles and somehow that the circle and the right angle seem diametrically opposed in terms of shapes. And the way you harmonize them together, um, it's like you're including both sides, but finding a way to make harmony from the two different areas. It's a beautiful piece. And it also, all of these paintings remind me a lot of Chaco and other ancestral Pueblo sites with the, the Kiva shapes. Um, were you trying to recall that? Sort of landscape? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, it that goes along with the flower world's concept. Um, so it's, uh, it was first discovered, so it's still a theory, but it's, uh, you know, the the religious uh, or the religious ideologies that came up from Mesoamerica and, uh, you know, that were, um, that were, that were, um, what's the word, excuse me, that, that, were, that are seen in art and tradition. Cultural relics from Chapultepec and Chihuahua. So, so the idea of flower worlds—is that go back to Mesoamerica, or is yes. that something here as well? And mm -hmm. it's just a public site. No, it, it's um, here as well. And it's like a public site. So they found that uh, the first signs of it here in Arizona on a four-mile relay, and then it went over to um, up in Kentucky areas. Um, they find a little bit of it in chocolate, not a lot, but there are there are um, those shadows. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to the third piece, four corners. Uh, I love the way these each piece expresses something a little bit different, but how they harmonize as a triptych. So this one, uh, four corners. As I look at it, it's both topographical, but also like the landscape. Yeah, so, uh, so I've been looking on Google Earth a lot and trying to find these sacred sites um, within the Four Corners area. And so when you're looking at it, when you're looking down the space on, on these sites, um, it just kind of, it, it, 
it creates its own narrative. And uh, so I wanted to place certain places in this painting um, as they would be if you are looking down in space. Um, so Chaco is more or less where it would be um, in New Mexico, and uh, the three Hopi Kivas, or the Hopi Mesas, excuse me. Yeah, so, yeah. So. And then um, we have a, a dove up in the corner just to, uh, yeah, so, you know, some of the peace just to, it's difficult at first it was very abstract, but as you look at it you start to see completely emerging I mean the you know, unless your eyes really focus on the outside, all you can see which is the figures that come through it. Yeah, so there's a yeah, and then there's a lot of these really you know, these older um, civilizations, these cities in in Arizona and in Colorado. Um, where the you know the Mecca, the Amazon the Mecca was. I mean, there was you know I'm not sure how many people back then, but there was a lot more than anybody had ever even you know had ever estimated. So um, yeah, I was trying to bring that in, and then the two angels or um, you know spirits or birds um, with the uh, scarlet macaw feathers. Um, yeah, so that represents you know the the transition of. Um, of cultures coming up from this area. And the, the entire four corners, you can also feel that, that space, you know, the New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Arizona border where they all come together. But it's a core also of so much often of the collective life, the collective directions, the core seasons, the core seems to come up so often. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it can. It's so beautiful. <laughs> I want to move as, as Transition as carefully as I can to the I created. Um, and I decided to make a mold of it. And so these are two molded um, pieces, castings, that um, I decided to cast in aluminum. Um, I've been exploring the different, the different feelings and the different, um, the different ways metal can just, can, um, describe a describe a feeling or a, a statement mm -hmm. and so to make these out of aluminum um i just wanted that metallic feeling so and to have it and so i filled them with coal mm -hmm. i'm going to try to show you that mm -hmm. and why coal um because i wanted it to to, to, to ask the question about what, what are mineral extraction into our rivers, into our streams, and waters that we drink, and having water in New Mexico to be such a commodity, or you know, it's something that we really need to protect and take care of, and we don't have that much. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a lot of people that live here, and we really need to have this as a high priority going into the future. That's a beautiful thought. I mean, I love the the way you capture the sense of ceramic in the aluminum, but then the the green interior seems to take it to a whole other material. Yeah, the tur yeah, it's turquoise. turquoise. It's, yeah, it's, um, so that's like you know, for me as a pueblo, um, turquoise is really much a, a, it's, a it's protection, mm -hmm. and so to have that on the inside. It's kind of a barrier. You know, it might be like my own holding pond, for instance. <laughs> and then we have to talk about these amazing things. The artificial block, and then the big heavy. Yeah, it's like a bronze. So I just, uh, I think bronze is one of the, you know, the more romantic of the metals, I guess you would say. Um, oh, and nice. So stones are very, they are a, they're a part of my, of my indigenous identity, mm -hmm. you know, so they remind me of how I need to be, um, how I need to be centered, how I need to be grounded, how I need to be vigilant, how I need to be careful, and pretty much don't let anybody mess with me today, mm -hmm. so stand up for myself. <laughs> well, that's a very skunk-like sentiment. Nobody messes with the skunk. And then, um, Kelsey, I'll move to the faces, but I don't want to make everybody watch it in the camera. 
So, Kelly, can you share what, tell us more about this amazing piece that you shared with us in the center? These earth warriors made out of cast iron and settled into this beautiful brown dirt. Faces were individually cast, they were wax castings. Um, so, and they were all done like two or three at a time in different parts, different parts of the country, actually. Um, so, I had them sitting around for a while and didn't really know what I was going to do with them. And then I started to recognize that they reminded me of, of an internal an external idea of an internal feeling of being, of being given an extraordinary gift by living in this land and being native or, and, having, and having a responsibility and not it really being out there with signs and, you know, and fists and trying to fight this, but just more understanding that you are already a part of this land. Well, you're making a very direct connection between the earth and its power and the, these faces that you can feel their strength, not just because they're cast iron and each one is so heavy that every time I, you go to pick it up and it's, uh, it surprises me. <laughs> and you mentioned before that you were inspired by warrior faces from across the globe. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to capture that and I started to look at the different styles of war paint. And I couldn't just I didn't, couldn't just um, tell the difference between um, indigenous America or say Africa or Viking. They're so similar that I just decided to just do that, just to do them in the style of American Indian. I'm going to lean for it a little bit. Well, it's um, a, it's... And, and then so uh, iron too is um, you know our, the center of the earth is made up of molten iron, and so that's kind of you know to to have the same material and to work with that same material is very inspiring. That's a great connection. I have gone through iron being the center of the earth and Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing information about our and uh, your works. Um, we really thrilled about them. Um, is there anything else you want to add before we stop? No, I think that's it. Well, thank you so much for sharing your beautiful work. There will be a here at Gallery Hojo through March 17th. I encourage everyone to come back and look because as beautiful as they are on screen, they're even more beautiful in person. And we feel very excited and lucky to have them. So thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you.